Hello there. In this video, I'm going to address some of the questions that I've had on optimizing your models and characters for the sandbox game. This is based on my own experience of working with different game engines, including Unity. And Unity is the engine that's used to create the sandbox game. Our building blocks as artists to create our characters and models are voxels. The game engine itself will use polygons. Within Vox Edit, you'll see up here in the top left within the animator, there is a faces count that gives you an indication of how many polygons you will be using in the game. I will show you what that looks like when a converted model like this is shown in another 3D package when it's already optimized. This is the same character exported into Maya. You'll see up here under faces, it has exactly the same face count. How the exporter has optimized is it has gone about looking for large flat planes or planar surfaces of lots of voxels and it's optimized it down into a single flat plane. You can see then to make more complex shapes, it's just used lots and lots of rectangular shape polygons. You'll see on the shield to create this more rounded shape, it's cost me a lot more polygons and a lot of them are very small. If I go to the base though, you'll see that a lot of the polygons are a lot larger. And this, of course, is an area of quite a lot of importance. So one of the criteria of creating assets for the sandbox game is to work within a boxy style. How this can work in your favor is if you can be creative about finding a more boxy way to create something like a shield, then it'll save you the polygons you might need to add some more characteristics to your models, such as this hanging beard that he has, or arrows sticking out of his back, or the details on his belt. Things that might be important for you to make sure you get the idea across of the character that you want to design. With the added bonus that your character or model is more inclined to fit in with the art style of the sandbox game. Still though, you want to have an interesting looking character or model. So to that end, without having to use a lot of voxels to create odd shapes or interesting detail, you can use the animator to add models to different joints and then place them such as the skulls on the belt here or the shields, which you can see are at odd angles on the shoulder. And the same with these clusters of three arrows. You can see that if I was to model these with voxels, I would end up with a lot of voxel steps just to create this kind of angle. One final note when it comes to optimizing your model, and I can't confirm this yet, but I'm assuming that it will be something similar to this within the sandbox game, is if you leave holes inside any larger masses or any large areas of voxels, small polygon clusters will be left behind. I'll show you what that looks like by removing a section of this character. So you can see here that I've removed a lot of his back and his side, and inside that is these clusters of polygons. These are clearly areas where I have not fully closed off the inside of the model with voxels. This is just something to be aware of. So when you're working on your model, try to make sure that you haven't left any areas unclosed or unfinished. And that is it for now. I hope this video has been useful to you.